This video will demonstrate client-side validation using JavaScript for the login form using the on submit event. So what we've got is our login form. Here, here is what it looks like. I've got a form, a field set, a legend. I've also got labels like this and I've got an input field of type text for the username and a, a password type um, input, input field for the password and another label. Now these labels won't work because they're not associated with an ID. So we, what we want to do is associate them with an ID. I'm going to give the first input field the ID username and the second one the ID password. So now when we save and refresh, when I click on these labels, they actually are associated with the, with the input field. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to use or to, to, we want when we submit, we want the form to actually do some validation. And what we'll use is an on submit, the on submit attribute of the form to actually call a function. And we want that function to retrieve the values of the username and, 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 and password and to check if they are empty. So uh, let's let's um, call the function. Let's we haven't written the function yet, but we want this function to be called validate form, and let's go ahead and write our function. So at this point, and I've got my console, I've got my console here, and I can see what problem I, I get with my JavaScript if I get any. Now at this point, we haven't got this defined, so let's go ahead and do that. So to define our function, we start with the keyword function and the name of our form, open curly, a curly open bracket and a closed, closed one. So the first thing what we want to do is grab whatever the user, oh, before I do that, what we want to do is get the input um, that was, that was entered by the user. So Using the document, document using document, let me just write it in correctly. Get element by ID, should have tabbed element by ID. And we will give the, the ID that we have just given them for the username that we used for our labels. Now we want the value. Now this call is gonna grab whatever I put in. So if I say test, that's gonna be called captured but it's going to be lost if I don't put it into a variable so now I'll define a variable and I'll call it user name and I'll do something similar for a password I'll call it user pass and here I'll call password all right so now we've got our values we can now perform some simple validation we'll say if the username is is empty. Uh, we return false. Otherwise, we return true. And we could have an alert an alert, alert box to the user um, saying enter a username. Let's save and see how that works. So if we attempt to log in, I get that uh, prompt box or sorry, not um, pop up box that says enter a username. Now, um, we can do something similar to to our password, but this is not really user friendly. What we want instead is to actually have sort of a um, some message appear on the same part of a form. So what we can do is create a, an empty span element and I'll give it an ID so we can access it from our JavaScript code. We call it username error. And we'll give it a class, uh, a CSS class to style it based on what we want our error to look like. Okay, so here is one and we can do another one while we're here for our password. I have not completed the whole story. 
password error. Now let's design our CSS. For this CSS, we just want to say that we want the font color to change to red if this class is applied to our to any of our HTML elements. Now, how do we access this from here? Now what we'll say is we'll do something similar to this. But this time we are calling our span element username error. And now we are putting in or using our inner text. Uh, yeah, got it in a text. And we can actually put in whatever we like. Please enter a username. Oh, when I spell it correctly. All right. And we remain as return false. I think I need to. All right. So now we have a, a, a nicer message. It's a nicer way of displaying things. Now we can do something similar. Now we know that this is working correctly. We can do something similar to our password. Well, we called it user pass. And this will be password error. That's what we called it. Please enter a password. Now the second error doesn't show up because we actually returned from the from the method or from the function call. Now what we we want is to um, is to test this part. So in this case, if I put in some value and now try to submit, now I get the the other part. But you notice that I've still got the the error appearing here. So even when I say test, um, well, it has accepted. So let's just do it like this. So even when I put in some username, it still remembers the error. So what we want to do is reset this error over here, reset the previous error messages. So the first one is basically just same. We just need to empty it, make it have an empty string and the same thing for a pass error. So now we get rid of these error messages once we provide something. Let's just try it out. And it works for both. All right. Now, another thing that we what we notice is when I say login, I only get the first error. I don't get the second one. If you want to show both errors, you can improve this. So um, in this case, what we want to do, we don't want to return false in here and neither here. We can say if so if username, just give me a second, if username. or the password is empty. If any of these are empty, then in this case, we return false. So let's give it a shot. Let's see what we get. So now both are empty and it works pretty much consistently. All right, so that's pretty much it for doing some client side validation. Of course, you always want to do server side validation, but this is not the topic of today's video. What I want to speak about next is how do I sort of display um, sort of a success message and stay on the form without having the form being submitted. For that, stay tuned for the next video and I'll see you then.